Chivalrous Sam phones a friend part one or why winning anything has never sucked so much. Player one is me, Lady Saber, 16 at the time, born exchange student here on a two year program, undergoing culture shock and suffering chronic cringe pain from daily interactions with Sam. Player two is Samwell Spaghetti Breath, king of the ravioli, the fettuccine, lord of the sandal socks and protector of the ladies. Complete lard. Wears cargo shorts, Minecraft hoodie, New Balance sneakers and Argyle fedora. He reeks like the garbage disposal of an Italian restaurant. Supporting character 3 is John, previously identified as Cute Boy. Slightly taller than Sam, he and I share a lot of common interests, or are, at the very least, interested in each other's interests. We're not dating yet, but it's heading in that direction. He and his family are from Louisiana, so he speaks passable French with a funny accent that I make fun of often. Ask Fred is an online registration system used to sign up for fencing tournaments. It's a great tool to see who is going to be at a tournament and how many fencers will attend. This story takes place the Sunday after Sam's first fencing lesson at a local tournament. If you haven't seen that video, the link is down below in the description. It's a rather large event with a great mix of fencers. My coaches regularly send emails to update our group with upcoming tournaments and Sam is on this list now. After a few days of school and minor cringy run-ins with Sam, I'm looking forward to a Sunday of competing for the first time in a long time and the first time in America. The Sabre event is in the afternoon Foil is in the morning in Epe is in between. I register on Ask Fred a few days prior. John has expressed an interest in my fencing, so he's tagging along to watch this tournament. It's about an hour drive, so we sit in the back seat and talk about our classes. Both he and my host mother don't know much about fencing tournaments, so I'm waxing eloquent on that subject. Regarding my appearance, I'm almost a polar opposite of how I present myself in practice. I do my hair in loose piggy tails, apply eyeliner and blush, and generally get dolled up. The makeup I use deals really well with sweat, but it's also expensive, so I only wear it to tournaments. The purpose here is to look innocent and harmless. It throws off the competition, and I look great in my medal photos. We arrive right on time, as Epe is finishing up and awarding medals. And I looked up this word to give you guys a definition, which is, it's a sharp, pointed, dueling sword designed for thrusting and used with the end blunted in fencing. The last competitors are stumbling out, sweaty and gross, grinning like idiots on their victory rush. This tournament is being held in a dusty down downstairs dojo, pretty upscale as far as tournaments go. It smells like fermenting sweat and vaguely like marinara sauce. I sign in at the registration desk before descending, and there he is. Chivalrous Sam is perched atop the bleachers, staring into my soul from across the room. His fedora is covering a mass of dried sweat and grease that might have once been hair. Sam hails me with both a full arm wave and a tip of the fedora, like he can't quite decide which will win Milady's heart. He gets to his feet and jog gallops down the bleacher steps, meeting me halfway. John, who had been walking behind me, draws up on my left. Hi, Lady Sabre. You look quite ravishing today. I'm about to say thanks and move on when John cuts in, yes she does, in a warm tone of voice and lays a hand on my elbow. It turns into a Mexican standoff while these two rooster people suck in their breath and puff out their chest. I shoulder my way past Sam with John beside me, set my stuff down against the wall and warm up with stretches. John sits on the bleachers next to me and we talk about Sam. I'm not sure if Sam was here to fence and just stayed another three hours to watch me fence or if he saw I was signed up and dropped in. Both prospects are equally discomforting. Sam is still standing in the middle of the room trying to contain his anger that his chivalry was slighted by some D-bag. His nightly intuition must have indicated that I needed saving from the unchivalrousness of John because he joins our conversations. You come here to fence today? No, I come for the aromatherapy. Oh hey Sam, yeah I'm gonna do saber in a little bit. Cool beans. You look good today. Are you wearing makeup? Here we go. Um, yeah. Indeed. That's a pity. You shouldn't need to. I think natural beauty is the best way to go. I smile awkwardly and nod, trying to work my way out of my own head so I can perform today. Sam opens his mouth to say something when John cuts him short and says, Sam, Lady Saber is trying to warm up. John, Lady Saber and I are trying to conversate. Can you please not butt into our conversations, please? John shakes his head and looks away. I finish my stretching routine, still a long way from my groove, and dress into my uniform while Sam sizes me up. He's making my skin crawl. 
overall. In most fencing tournaments, there are two rounds of competition. The first, called pools, split everyone off into groups of four to six. You fence everyone in your pool and get a feeling of how everyone is fencing that day. All the bouts are to five points. The pools are distributed so that players with a lettered rank are evenly split among lower ranked and unranked fencers. After pools, everyone is seated back into a bracket for direct elimination. These bouts are to 15 points. The loser is knocked out and the winner advances. The ranking system goes from A, which is professional, Olympic, generally expert level, down to E, which is novice. Under E, there is a U rank, which is unranked. U fencers are highly unpredictable, as it only means they haven't competed very much or haven't competed recently. Someone can practice for 10 years without competing, and they'll still be a U. In this case, because I had not competed in America before, my rating was a U. My first pull played right into my hands. My opponent was ranked E, and it clearly had got to his head. He swaggers onto the strip, sizing me up. I play silly, tossing my hair, and looking overly excited and nervous. Well, we come to on guard. I score my first touch quickly. I act surprised and ask the ref, did I get it? My opponent is a little miffed, but he tries again. I lend a touch on the side of his mask. Hits like this make your ears ring, and he makes a frustrated noise. Next, I hit him hard on the cuff. He realizes now, I'm a little more than I appear to be, but he can't compensate, and the bout ends 5-0. I flounce and eagerly shake his hand. Sir Sam is up on the bleachers, cheering for me louder than he realizes. It's more obnoxious than enthusiastic and really cringeworthy because he's basically the only person cheering. He yells encouragements the whole time, like, Get him, Lady Saber! And, Yeah, that's my girl! The pattern is the same for the next four bouts. It's almost as helpful as a back pocket on a shirt. Finally, pools are finished. There's some downtime between pools and direct eliminations while the referee turns in score sheets and everyone is seated. Sir Sam takes his chance to woo a lady. He approaches me, looking overly excited, with his fedora in one hand waving it like a slimy wriggling fish. You fenced really well, Lady Saber. Thanks, Sam. You know, I noticed that John wasn't cheering you on at all. You probably didn't see, but I was the whole time. That's because I told him how annoying it is to cheer like that when you're competing, I thought. But what I said was, yeah, I heard Sam. It's usually better if you don't make so much noise because it can be really distracting on the strip. Sam looks dejected for a moment before getting visibly mad. You know, I was just trying to help. You don't need to be so rude about it just because I'm distracting you. I didn't have to stay at this tournament all day just for you, Lady Saber. I'm just being nice. I wish I had a pocket full of cookies to give you, Sam, I thought, for being such a nice guy, TM. After enduring this tirade of supreme kindness, it's time for direct eliminations. I seated well, so my first few matches are easy. Sir Sam, of course, takes a seat behind me and moves seats between bouts, often crossing the room to be consistently sitting behind me and cheers with all the gusto of a squealing piglet. I never quite find a rhythm and lose the final bout, taking a silver medal and earning a rank of E. Sir Sam Sam is totally thrilled. I don't think he's ever felt more responsible for someone else's victory in his entire life than this moment. He shambles towards me going for a hug, which I turn into a handshake, quickly reconsider, and turn into a fist bump. He shakes the fist vigorously. Keep in mind that I'm standing for a medal photo with three other medalists while all of their friends family and coaches are taking pictures, the result is a photo bomb of epic proportions, which I would post here in a heartbeat if it didn't involve revealing both of our faces. Sam realizes that he's made a no-no when he turns to see a phalanx of camera phones awaiting his swift exodus. He tries to play it off, removing his fedora and a sweeping bow like, hey, I'm a medalist too. (laughs) Haha, look, I'm with the medal winners in their pictures. So funny. He has a cartoonish, nervous smile pasted on which is quickly wiped away as the crowd starts to jeer him out of the shot. He tries to walk away with his pride. He keeps his distance while I remove my uniform and pack up to leave. As I head for the door though, I'm intercepted by Sam, much in the way that an actual Sam might intercept a jumbo jet full of orphans. Hey, Lady Saber, can I ask a favor of you? Can I refuse, I thought. What is it, Sam? Well, I need a ride home. What do you mean? Isn't your mom going to come pick you up? 
And then I thought, or are you tired of having to get her up in your business? Well, she dropped me off, but I didn't know what time to have her pick me up. So I was just hoping you could give me a ride. I thought, ah, very clever, Sam. Very clever ploy indeed. Only a master strategist like you could conjure up such a flawless plan to spend time with Milady. Sorry, Sam, but my car only has room for John and I to sit. Well, how am I supposed to get home then? (laughs) I don't know, Sam, but I really can't help you. Okay, fine. I guess I'm just not deserving of a simple ride home. Um, what? I thought. Sam, I just told you there's not enough room in... Whatever, Lady Saber. Can I just use your phone to call my mom? I give him my phone and he makes an exasperated call home. In listening to the one-sided dialogue, it sounds like he told his mom in advance that I would be taking him home. He hangs up and gives me my phone back with the addition of sweat crust and stalks off without another word. John, my host mother and I pile into the car and make our drive home. I had not seen slash heard the last of him that day, but that is coming up in the next episode. In the Chronicles of Sir Sam, somehow I always keep coming back to trying to give him the benefit of the doubt by saying, oh, maybe he's just a nice guy. He's just trying to have a friend here. And then some things always happen where I say, oh, never mind. That is really weird and creepy. The OP Lady Saber seems to be constantly in that understanding of what Sam is all about, at least from her perspective, because she's obviously living through this. But for some reason keeps entertaining him throughout this entire time. I mean, it's easier said than done to totally cut somebody off because you can't force somebody not to come to your hobbies or whatever your interests are unless you went to her coaches and told them, hey, this guy that's coming is making me feel really uncomfortable and this is why. If she didn't actually do that, then it's probably hard to keep him from being around. So maybe she just figures that if she's nice to him, he won't be even more weird to her. But from his perspective, he thinks that he's doing everything that somebody could possibly want. The fact that he's standing up in the bleachers cheering so loud probably is sir samuel's love language (laughs) if he has one he's probably thinking that he's doing something that he would want to have happen to him he would probably love if somebody was in the bleachers cheering him on to that degree so when he does it to her and she does not really like or care for it at all even beyond the whole part of being distracting for the actual competition he probably just doesn't get that at all one of the many things that's not cool that sir samuel does here is put her on the spot to try and force her to give him a ride when he didn't even talk with her or ask her that earlier. So it's not like he asked way in advance and then he told his mom, hey, can I get a ride from you before I tell my mom? He just told his mom he's going to get a ride from her and then tried to kind of guilt her into giving him a ride regardless by saying, you won't even give me just a ride. But luckily in this case, she just straight up said, no, I can't give you a ride. This is the situation. I'm with my host mom and I'm with John and that's all there is to it. I think this is the first time in the Sir Samuel saga where we actually see John kind of going toe-to-toe with Sam in the most mild way possible because before this they didn't really have any confrontational type interactions but here she describes him as two chickens doing a standoff. I'm not a fan of hyper focusing on specific parts of his appearance or anyone's appearance but in this case she's trying to I guess illustrate why she is feeling what she's feeling based on the entire situation here. It seems like little by little though she is getting more and more of a grounding against her Samuel even though it's still continuing on kind of in this way where he's led to believe that their friendship is okay and this entire relationship is okay because even when he tells John hey we're talking here he's kind of pushing back trying to claim his time with Lady Saber but with all of this let me know what you think is going to happen in the next episode and if you do want to see the next episode of this make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on and let me know down below in the comments what would you do if you were in this situation and who was the jerk one last thing if you have not followed on Spotify and make sure to follow on Spotify so you can hear all the episodes while you're cruising. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.